Over the past couple years, we've seen all manner of tablets into the market, from low-cost losers like the $99 Anovo Novo 7 to high-end winners like the $500 Asus Infinity Pad Transformer. We've seen all kinds of devices hit the market, but very few of them have captured the public's imagination. Enter Google with its $199 7-inch Google Nexus 7, uh, a brand new tablet that promises to change all that by providing a powerful quad-core Tegra 3 processor and the latest Android 4.1 Jelly Bean OS for under $200. Let's see how this device works. So let's have a quick look at the layout and specs of the Google Nexus 7. As its name implies, this is a 7-inch screen. It's 1280 by 800, which makes it a lot better than the first-gen Kindle Fire, which is 1024 by 600 or the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, which is also 1024 by 600 uh, but about on a par with uh, the Toshiba Excite 7 that costs around $300 more. Um, in addition to the screen, which is a whopping 400 nits, uh, you've got this front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera. Um, if you turn the side here, you can see this is just 0.41 inches thick, and it weighs just 12 ounces, which is less than the Fire or the, or the Nook. Uh, and of course on the back you have this nice textured back which says Nexus and it also says Asus which is the real manufacturer of this tablet. Now uh, looking around the sides not a lot of ports here to talk about. We've got on this side here we've got our power and our volume rocker. On the bottom of the system we have a micro USB port which we really like because you can both charge and get data over a standard port something that a lot of tablet makers have forgotten to do and they give you a proprietary docking connector that you, if you lose you're in trouble. This uses any cord that you have laying around the house for your phone. Uh, there is a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack over here and on this side there is a four pin connector that would be for docking or accessories although nothing has come out that takes advantage of it quite yet. So what do we like about the new Google Nexus 7 tablet? Well, first of all, we really like the new Android 4.1 Jelly Bean OS. It doesn't look very much different than Android 4.0 Ice Cream Sandwich, but it has a couple of really neat improvements. The first of which is improved notification drawer. So when you get an email or you get an update, in the old operating system it would appear in the lower corner of the screen and you wouldn't get a lot of information with it. Now here it's in the top drawer here and if apps have been programmed to use it, which right now not a lot have, but Gmail does, you can actually see some information from the application like that. I just got two messages. And you can actually use your fingers to pinch on it and either expand or contract. Although if it's already expanded, you can't really expand any further, but you can ex contract or potentially expand the message, the, the pane here, so you can see more of the message, more of the notification. Uh, so that's a pretty neat feature that you didn't have in Ice Cream Sandwich. So our favorite new feature of Android 4.1 Jelly Bean is the Siri-like personal assistant known as Google Now. So if you hold down the home button and you just move your finger up to the circle that appears, you will get transported to a page that's been designed for you and updated based on your searches and your habits. It holds the weather based on your location. You can even see that we're here in New York and there's a picture of New York during the daytime behind the search box. It holds appointments that you have, uh, and if you show more cards, it can also show you things like sports updates from your favorite teams, uh, a bus schedule of buses near you, a uh, list of restaurants near you, uh, and it's supposed to learn from your behavior, so if you search for the Yankees a whole bunch of times, it's supposed to show you Yankee scores. So one of the most innovative features of Jelly Bean is the new search box, which can give you answers to your voice questions that are sometimes not just results, but actual final answers that don't require you to click on a link. Uh, so this voice recognition is really sensitive and really accurate. So if we tap on the microphone icon, uh, we'll ask the question. Did the Yankees win? So you see, it actually tells us that the Yankees beat the White Sox. Now, we can ask it a myriad of questions. It doesn't have answers to everything, but it has some neat ones. For example, how tall is the Empire State Building? Empire State Building is 1,454 feet tall. So you see, it gives you information and then gives you a link to read more at Wikipedia. Now, if it doesn't have an answer built into its segment of answers, uh, which it doesn't for most things in the world, it will still give you Google results. Uh, but we found the speech recognition is excellent. 
Speaking of speech recognition, the uh, voice to text now works offline. So if you're somewhere with a weak internet connection, no worries, it doesn't have to go out and poll Google to find out what you said. So here we are in a note taking app that we downloaded. We're gonna add a new note and you see on our keyboard there's a little microphone, just like there was in previous versions. But here, even if we're offline, it's going to work. So we're gonna actually go into airplane mode. So no connection and we're going to say, how now brown cow? And you see it got that pretty accurately. Now it's not perfect when we read it Hamlet soliloquy from, uh, from Shakespeare. The, it got about 40 to 50% accurate. It had trouble with homonyms and with old English and with words that weren't quite uh, commonplace like tis instead of is. But it's pretty darn good and considering that it works offline, that's a really nice feature. Google Maps also works offline, so you can download the map of a whole city and that will work offline as well. Another thing that we really like about this, of course, is the Tegra 3 processor that runs at 1.3 gigahertz uh, with, in single core mode and 1.2 gigahertz if multiple cores are enabled. What can you do with all that power? Well, besides just having a really smooth, rock solid experience in the entire operating system, you can play some games and get really great special effects. So if we go and we look at Shadowgun, for example, here's a game that we've played on some other Tegra 3 devices, and just like on those, you're going to see some special effects that you just don't see on every other device. So if we go and we hit play, and we just hit Shadowgun, we'll resume the game we were in before so you can just see where we were. You'll see some special effects there. You're going to see uh, some billowing cloth and some fire and smoke effects that you wouldn't get with a slower processor. And that's all because Tegra 3 here has 12 GPU cores and four CPU cores plus another low power core that saves power when playing video. So if you go, if you see what we're doing over here, there's flags over here that are billowing in, that are billowing around. And if I turn around over here, you're gonna see all this smoke and fire and more billowing. And that's all a result of having the high-end quad-core and GPU that you wouldn't get. You'd be able to play this game on some slower devices, but you wouldn't get all of these effects. And with a 1280 by 800, 400 nit screen, it really looks great. What we don't like about this, the, the couple of cons with this, the color of the screen is not as, doesn't pop like it should, and the lack of a back-facing camera is kind of a disappointment. Even though a lot of people wouldn't use this for taking family photos, you're going to need a back-facing camera for shooting QR codes, for doing augmented reality apps, and with this you only get the 1.3 megapixel front facer for doing video chats. Uh, beyond that, we think this is really kind of a no-brainer at $199. You get a lot for the money. Uh, you also get a $25 credit right now to Google's Play Store. And obviously this device has a lot of links in it, a lot of promotions and widgets for Google Play Movies, books, and the new Google Play Magazines app, which was a little sluggish in our experience. Uh, but otherwise, everything on this was super fast. Uh, and we really, really like this device. We think it's absolutely a Kindle Fire killer. Uh, for anyone who wants content consumption, or a digital assistant, or just to do some gaming, uh, for $199, this is the tablet to beat.